Um, the next paper is entitled, and I'm really curious about the large animal detection and continuous traffic monitoring on the highways, and it's presented by Abu Mukaji from AG Business Limited in Canada. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming into this talk today. Um, Although I'm presenting at IEEE sensors, I'm not talk, going to talk about the <coughs> sensor itself. Um, our focus here is on the signal processing that we did on the data acquired from the sensor and the application itself, which in this case is uh, an animal detection system and traffic monitoring. So, let's move on. Um, first of all, why, why such a system? Why do we need to do animal detection? Uh, the motivation for this is that there are actually a lot of wildlife animals, wildlife behavior to it. This slide, it shows statistics from the United States. Over a period of five years between 2002 and 2006, eight states in the U.S. which have uh, HSIS, which is Highway Safety Information System, um, they counted a total of over 250,000 collisions. If we extrapolate this information to uh, the rest of the United States, the number comes up to about 250,000 animal vehicle collisions every year. And if we can, and considering data from another source, if we look at the insurance claims made for wildlife vehicle collisions and counting the number of dead animal carcasses found, the number actually is about 1 million vehicle collisions per year. Um, which is a significant amount of property damage, uh, human injuries, and not to mention dollar value. Uh, the first the statistics here are, act, are taken from Canadian data, but you can consider, you can think about it in a, in a U.S. context as well. And you can see if there's 0.4 percent fatalities with smooth accidents, and there are let's say half of one million collisions with moves in a year, that's still 2,000 people fatally injured. So that was, that's the background as to why we need such an application. Um, so the requirements for collision avoidance are to reliably detect the presence of large animals on the roadway. It's we also want to automatically alert travelers as long as an animal is on the road so that they know it's present um, and also to cause minimum damage or minimum have, an, have a very small impact on the environment. This is especially crucial because a lot of the highways run through forest areas um, and natural habitats for some endangered species. Um, so moving on, the currently available technologies for um, Performing animal detection are break the beam systems. They use some of them use infrared beams. Uh, some of them use microwave beams. Um, they are usually set up on the side of the road to act like a tripwire. So when an animal crosses into the road or leaves the road, it sets up an alarm. There's also uh, infrared thermal imaging systems, which are uh, which detect animal heat signatures. And the third option. Um, is a scanning radar. The system that I'm going to talk about today um, is based on a 360-degree scanning radar. But the features of our system, it's called LORD, um, which, is, which stands for Large Animal Warning and Detection System. Well, the name is kind of, uh, it's a bit of a misnomer, but we'll not get into that for now. So what features does it have? It can track animals within the right of way at all times. It generates fewer false alarms due to flying birds, falling leaves, precipitation. Um, because we use a radar um, and we don't need to do a lot of clearing in the installed areas, it has a very small environmental footprint. And we, it also is capable of uh, all weather operation around the clock. That's a picture, um, that's a Google Street View image of the system that has been deployed. It's um, about an hour south of Ottawa in Canada. So you can see pointers, you can see the radar, it would work off the grid to solar power. We have a processing a computer installed here on the box. And we have uh, sign warning signs with lights on top which are activated wirelessly. 
coming to the sensor. I'm sure most of you here would be interested to know about it. Um, we use a we use a 360 degree scanning radar. It uh, works with an FMCW waveform. Um, works in the K band. It has a range of 700 meters. And you can see all the uh, specs on the slide here. What are the objectives of uh, signal processing for this? Our objectives are to first uh, detect moving targets with a low pulse alarm and a high detection rate. We want to be able to track and localize all targets accurately. And we want to be able to classify targets so we know that it's an animal. Challenges. Uh, we have a couple of challenges when uh, processing this data. And the first of this is uh, background clutter. Our background is not consistent. It's uh, varying over time. The mean varies over time. The noise level varies over time. It even varies during the day. Um, if you see this particular image over here, which is a radar PTI scan, these two white lines over here are two lanes of a highway. Going one going north, one going south. The darker lines over here are vegetation. So vegetation trees on the outside. There's a median with lots of sun. The black line dots are in between are probably cars on the road. The second challenge is ghost targets. Um, what are ghost targets? So when, a, when the radar detects something, a really strong reflector, for example, a big truck, it sometimes has, uh, and it has a signature on the radar type load, like shown here. And it's just so strong that it shows up as a target in the radar scan, which um, despite a lot of suppression process, suppression involved, we do a lot of processing, it sometimes still manifests itself on um, on the output. So we get those targets. We get targets that are that come up at the same time as um, the true target. They mm -hmm. have the same speed as the true target, but it's moving in a different direction. And very often, this leads to false flags. Um, so the existing approaches, or the commercial approaches uh, taken to for similar applications, include follow these methodologies. They are they use each radar PPI scan separately, so it's a static detection. They try to detect targets in each scan, and then they track them over time. Um, commercial approaches ignore the problem of ghost targets. So the solutions that we found uh, consider a ghost target to be a true target, and they'll uh, just report it as a fact. They also detect only use speed to detect animals. There's no size-based classification. So the problem with this is uh, sometimes slow-moving vehicles can also be classified as animals. Um, an output from a com commercially available uh, processing software, you can see these tracks are an accumulation of radar tracks detected over 30 minutes of daytime operation in the same site. Um, ideally, we would have seen cars along these two these two rows and maybe an animal or two down here. So as you can see, there's a lot of pulse detection and pulse tracks generated here. Moving on. Um, so here, I'm trying, we're comparing filter tracks from what we saw on the previous slide. We have eliminated a lot of the noisy tracks. We've made sure they fit onto into the roads. That's on the left side. And the right-hand side shows the, the output from the processing that we've developed. As you can see, um, the processing here is cut off at about 400 meters. Anything beyond 400 meters was not usable for the purpose, for the animal detection purposes. Um, this was a, a, a setback, I should say, because we, we had hoped to get the entire 700 meters range. Um, when we did our, our own processing, you can see First, you are able to use the entire 700 meters. Second, some of the tracks, this was one of us walking actually, one of my co-workers walking by the side. There is a continuous track over here, but, but here we use some of the tracks. So, well, 
the advantages that we have, um, we are able to improve, improve the area coverage, the effective area, we can use the entire effective range of the radar effectively. Um, we were able to reduce the pulse track about one tenth. Um, detection performance has improved, like you saw in the track. Um, we are not missing as many targets as before. The detection delay has been reduced. Earlier it took about six to eight seconds for the to uh, ensure detection. We can do it within about three seconds now. We are also able to distinguish animals from slow moving traffic. Um, some results. Uh, this plot shows the average number of beacon activations per hour. Um, this since this data was taken in summer, there's um, there's a disproportionately high amount of detections over here, which is which can be attributed to construction workers being in the area. Uh, but nighttime nighttime data is consistent with the expected values. This is um, I have a little. Was, um, this is just a screenshot of actual data I was hoping to say an animation, but it doesn't seem to be working. So it will later. Um, we had uh, we had an instance where a, a car moving along the highway comes up here. It's just uh, we are playing back actual data collected from the site, and uh, so moving animal on the road. You can see, we actually see the car swerving around the animal, trying to avoid it. <coughs> Too bad. Okay. Well, something has to go around that. Anyway, um, more results. We are we compiled uh, speeds of cars because we have a radar. We are able to get traffic information, and we noticed about a fifteen percent reduction in speed when when the beacon has been active. It's uh, promising for end users. Our uh, Ministry of Transport is actually. Happy that people are slowing down. It's been effective that way. And finally, future work. We are looking at the data, looking at uh, seeing, trying to see how we can first make use of those targets, so how we can make use of the clutter and improve our processing. We are also exploring new application areas beyond animal detection. And uh, that's all my talk. Thanks for coming and listening to me.